Christ, the feast that frees us. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where This house proclaim from floor to rafter All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome In this place Welcome to Sunday School, everyone. It is so good to see you. And thanks, Maggie, for leading us in that music today. You're going to need some things. Your normal wondering supplies, colored pencils, paper, watercolors. We also have a special craft at the end. So you're going to need a paper plate. And then inside this blue silvery bag, you'll find green clay, blue birthday candles, and some glitter. But hold on to that till the end. Right now, all you need is the pony bead necklace, which you'll find inside your story box. Looks like this. Let's hear more from Miss Lori. This is our story rug, where we hear stories of God. And you will see, here is Advent, and Christmas, and Epiphany, and Lent, and Easter, and the whole season of Easter, and Pentecost, and the season of, after Pentecost, green for growing, growing, growing things until it comes back to Advent. And here is another calendar. goes this way. This is in your story box. And you will find that it also has Advent and Christmas and Epiphany and Lent and Easter and the season of Easter and Pentecost and all the long, beautiful, growing time of the season after Pentecost. And it matches right up with the story rug. And you will hear more about this in the story today. Let's prepare our hearts and our minds and our bodies to listen to one of the stories of God and God's people. Thanks, Ryan family. Today's story, How the Church Tells Time, we found in Young Children in Worship on page 126. The Bible verse that goes with this is from Leviticus 23, verses 1 to 3. Our storyteller today is Deaconess Claire. Our music leader today is Suzanne Bench. And our special craft at the end is led by Deaconess Claire. And if you stay tuned, there are a couple bloopers from her parents. Welcome to Sunday School. This is a place where we can be with God and talk to God and tell stories of God. We also sometimes tell stories of the church here. And this is one of those stories.
So sometimes it's very hard to tell what time it is. There are all kinds of time. I wonder how the church tells time. Some say it's a line. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Well, this could be the beginning, and this could be the end, or this could be the beginning, and, and this could be the end. hard to tell beginnings and endings when time is a line. I know. <laughs> Let's take the ending that could be a beginning and the beginning that could be an ending and tie them together. Now the ending is the beginning and the beginning is the ending. This is how the church tells time. This is the church here puzzle. It can also show us how the church tells time. First, we have to find the special days. Hmm. Here is Christmas. Here is Easter, and here, whew, here, ouch, whew, hot. Here is Pentecost. Whew, whew. Mm. Here are the blue Sundays, and here are the purple Sundays. And here are all the white Sundays. And here are all the green Sundays. I'm running out of room over there. And lots and lots of green Sundays. Well, let's see if we can put the puzzle of the church here back together. Let's begin with Christmas. It goes about right here. And Easter... Easter goes about right there. And Pentecost, whoo, hot, whoo, goes about right there. <laughs> hmm. Christmas is a special day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus and the mystery that God became a person. 
Christmas is so special that it takes four Sundays to get ready. And we call this time Advent. So we need four getting ready Sundays, four blue Sundays. Because blue is the color of getting ready. But where do we put them? Hmm. Well, Advent tells the beginning of the new church year and the ending of the old one. So let's put the four blue Sundays right about here. The beginning that is an ending and the ending that is a beginning. One, two, three, four. Hmm. Now, there's also so much joy at Christmas that we just have to celebrate for one more week. Easter. Easter is the time that we celebrate the mystery that Jesus died and rose again and is with us still. Easter is so special that it takes six Sundays to get ready and while blue is the color of getting ready, so is purple. It's kind of a different sort of getting ready, getting ready for Easter. A little bit more purpley getting ready. So let's put the four, four, the six purple Sundays before Easter. One, two, three, four, five, We are so happy that Jesus is alive. So we celebrate Easter for six more Sundays after that. So the color of Easter is white. One, two, three, four, five, six right up to Pentecost. Ooh, hot. <laughs> the day that God gave the Holy Spirit to the church so the church could say and do the amazing things that Jesus did. Now, all we have are all of these green Sundays left. They connect the time of Christmas with the time of Easter Pentecost and back around. Hmm. How many do we need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the rest, yeah, connect Pentecost to Advent. One, two, you can count with me. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, oh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, there's still more, 
22, 23, 24, 25. Hmm. These words help us with the names of church time. This is Advent. This is the time that the church gets ready for Christmas. This is Epiphany. This is the time that the church celebrates how God is known to the whole world. This is Lent. This is the time the church gets ready to celebrate the mystery of Easter. This is Easter. The time that the church celebrates the mystery that Jesus died and is alive again and still is with us. This is Pentecost. Ooh, hot. And this is the time, the time that the church <laughs> celebrates God's gift of the Holy Spirit to the whole church. And these are the days after Pentecost. The time when the church tells so many stories. These are the three great days, Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost. I wonder where we are today. Right there. Today is the last Sunday in the church year. It's the last Sunday after Pentecost. We're just about to the end that is the beginning and the beginning that is the end. It's time for a song with Miss Suzanne. Hey everyone, Miss Suzanne here with a song. You know in Sunday school how we talk about the different seasons of the year and how the church tells time? We talk about ordinal time, which is like ordinary, regular time, and then we have the Christmas season, and we have Advent, and the Easter season, and Lent. But when you really think about it, we don't just love God during these certain seasons of the year. We love him all the time, right? Forever. And so today's song is about how we'll love the Lord forever. And you need to stand up because we're going to use our bodies to do this song. First of all, we're going to spell out some words. So the song is going to go like this. Love, and you're going to make an L. And then you clap like this. Love, I love, I love the Lord forever. And then we'll repeat that, we'll repeat that, we'll repeat that. And then we're going to say, I'll do my best, I'll do my best. Whoa! I'll do my best for you. Oh, oh, oh. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Whoa. I'll do my best for you. And then we're going to do some other words. So with your bodies, see if you can make a T. Perfect. Just like this. That's going to be for trust. And then can you make your body into an S? This is maybe the hardest one. Kind of like this. That's going to be serve. And then you have a P which is going to be for praise. Okay? So follow along, dance, have fun. Should be a good time. Here we go. Love, I love, I love the Lord forever. Love, I love, I love the Lord forever. I do my best, I do my best. Whoa, I'll do my best for you. Oh, 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 I'll do my best, I'll do my best. Whoa, I'll do my best for you. Trust, trust. I'll trust, I'll trust the Lord forever. Trust, I'll trust, 
I'll trust the Lord forever. I'll do my best, I'll do my best. Whoa, I'll do my best for you. Oh, 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 I'll do my best, I'll do my best. Whoa, I'll do my best for you. Serve, serve, I'll serve. I'll serve the Lord forever. Serve, I'll serve. I'll serve the Lord forever. I'll do my best, I'll do my best. Whoa, I'll do my best for you. Oh, 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 I'll do my best, I'll do my best. Whoa, I'll do my best for you. Praise, praise, I'll praise. I'll praise the Lord forever. Praise, I'll praise. I'll praise the Lord forever. I'll do my best, I'll do my best. Whoa, I'll do my best for you. Oh, 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 I'll do my best, I'll do my best. Whoa, I'll do my best for you. Way to go, everybody. Hopefully that got you moving. It's time to make an advent wreath. Let's get crafty. I'm gonna to present to you something from inside your story box. You'll need to get this story box out and inside you will find and you will need your advent bundle. It's in a beautiful blue, glistening, noisy bag. And then maybe you'll also need a paper plate or some sort of work surface that you're okay using clay on. So ask, ask one of your parents if that's okay. I have just a small paper plate and that will do just fine for me. If you have long hair like me, you also might want to tuck it out of the way. Because I get messy when I work with clay. So why are we working with clay today? Well, let's find out. Inside this bag you have, ooh, a scroll with some instructions. A beautiful box, don't open it. I know it's tempting, see all those beautiful stars. Hmm, a long white right piece of ribbon. You don't need that this week. A candle. Also, we don't need that this week. Clay. And one, two, three, four blue candles. some glitter and sequins. All right. So we, ooh, and one star. So the star stays in the bag. The ribbon stays in the bag. The scroll stays in the bag. This candle stays in the bag. And this beautifully decorated star box stays in the bag. Just twist tie that back up together and put it back in your box for later. Okay, so if you need some help opening this up, that's a great thing for a parent to help you do. You can do it by yourself. It's great as well. You want to pull out your modeling clay. I double checked on allergies and this should be fine for all of our kids, but I encourage you if um, that might be a concern in your family to double check the ingredients and you can look up the brand online. All right. Now, we are going to take this green clay and we are going to mold it. 
you ever made a snake out of clay? Sometimes you can take it and, well, here, I'll show you. Kind of roll it. Now we want to make it into a circle. It's not quite big enough yet for me. Hmm. You know what would be great with this? I think a little bit of glitter. Make it festive. Roll, 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 roll. Ooh, it's all sparkly. How fun. When I connect the one end to the other end, and that is now a circle. And it's also a wreath. And then this you can put on your plate and stick one candle in here, one candle in here, one candle, oh, not that way, <laughs> one candle in here, and one candle in here. Yeah, and you have made for yourself an advent wreath. We will be using these Advent wreaths throughout the entire season of Advent during Sunday School. So we ask that you set them aside in a safe place so that you can pull them out every time that you listen to one of the Advent stories as we get ready for the birth of Jesus and the mystery of Christmas that God would become a human being. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, as Megan will help us out with learning a song version of it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Oh, give us, we pray, all the things we need, forgive us, then teach us to forgive and lead us away, away from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Two, three, four. Amen. It is time for your own work. Today we have... Um, an invitation after the acknowledgments page to learn a verse of Away in a Manger that will be used on Christmas Eve in worship. We also have after that our few bloopers from uh, Deaconess Claire's parents. See if they can figure out what the puzzle is. Well, I don't know what you will do for your own work today. Maybe you'll skip ahead and learn a verse from Away in a Manger. Maybe you'll make your own circle of the church year, or maybe you'll just continue working on your Advent wreath. Whatever you do, I hope it is a blessing for you today.
Thanks for joining us. Hi everyone, I'm Liza Maselli. I'm the praise band director at Luther Memorial Church. I'm going to help you learn OA in a manger for our virtual service on Christmas Eve. Thanks for agreeing to do it. There are three verses, and each of you have been assigned to one. Skip ahead now so you can learn your verse. Verse 1. All right, let's take a listen to verse 1 in its entirety, and then afterwards we'll learn it together at a slower tempo. Okay, here's our starting note. Away. Okay, I'll count us in. One, two, three. One, two. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down. Let's check out the second two lines of verse 1 together. I'll count us in. One, two, three. One, two. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus Sleep on the hay. Okay, let's put all four lines together. One, two, three, one, two. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus. That was the ending of our lesson, but please go back and practice at the slower tempo. Once you've finished and you feel comfortable, go back to the beginning of the lesson and practice with the full tempo recording. I wish you all good luck and I can't wait to hear how everyone sounds in the end. Let's take a listen to verse 2 in its entirety, and afterwards, we'll learn it together at a slower tempo. Here's our note. We'll do the first two lines. I'll give us our count in. One, two, three, one, two.
All right, let's do the second two lines. One, two, three, one, two. I love the Lord Jesus. Okay, let's see if we can do the whole thing, all four lines together. One, two, three, one, two. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no Alright everyone, that was the ending of our lesson, but please go back and practice at the slower tempo. Once you've finished and you feel comfortable, go back to the beginning of the lesson and practice with the full tempo recording. I wish you all good luck and I can't wait to hear how everyone sounds in the end. Three. Let's take a listen to verse 3 in its entirety, and afterwards we'll learn it together at a slower tempo. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless Let's do the first two lines together at a slower tempo. Here's our note, I'll count us in. One, two, three, one, two. Be near me, Lord Jesus. two lines. I'll count us in. One, two, three, one, two. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for Okay, let's see if we can put all four lines together. We'll keep it at a slow tempo. I'll count us in. One, two, three, one, two. Be near me, Lord Jesus. everyone that was the ending of our lesson but please go back and practice at the slower tempo 
Once you've finished and you feel comfortable, go back to the beginning of the lesson and practice with the full tempo recording. I wish you all good luck and I can't wait to hear how everyone sounds in the end. Are you getting a photo? A photo opportunity. What are you working on, Omanopa? We haven't a clue yet. Um, I was thinking it was going to be a clock, but I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of neat, whatever it is. Maybe. Just pretty. Maybe it's a kind of advent wreath. Maybe this is 12 o'clock and this is 6 o'clock. If this were a clock. Maybe it's just to play with. What do you think, Lucy? I bet you her mommy knows. I wonder what the colors remind you of. Oh, it's the, uh, the church here. Ta-da! Okay, it's the so church. So this is here. Easter and that's Christmas. He's good. Now, how do we put it together? Okay. You're going to watch the whole time as we put it together? Yeah. We did this. So if this is Christmas. Find Advent. That right. usually helps. Advent has got to be blue or purple. How many weeks are there in Advent? Uh, Four-ish. How many Sundays, I guess, is the better question. I thought there were five. It's four. Some years there's almost a fifth. Yeah. Okay. But it's so the what's only... the red one? Well, don't tell us yet. Well, what holidays are red? Holidays are red. There's Christmas is red. In the church? Oh, in the church. Uh... In the church. Okay, we got Advent, we got Christmas. And this is Lent. And maybe this is, if that's Easter, maybe this. Ooh, what color is Pentecost? What are the Sundays after Pentecost? What color are they? What do you color do you wear on Pentecost? And how many Sundays are there in Christmas? Uh -huh. Two. Mm -hmm. And how many Sundays are there in Epiphany? In what? Epiphany. Epiphany. I don't know, how many Sundays in Easter? There's usually about six in Easter. So this one's out? So where'd this come from? Now you get some things turned around so it can fit. You can slow this one. Yeah, but are the, any of these face the wrong way? This one. So where does this go? In the eastern? What do you think, Lucy? Not right yet. How many Sundays do you have in Easter? And how many do you have in... Does this one count as... That's Easter Sunday. So one, two, three, four, five. So we're missing one. Yeah, it's too s neat. Christmas. Usually. 